Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to Woman Magazine with a focus on audiences. This video is going to be particularly relevant for you if you are studying the EDUCAS A-Level exam specification because this is an optional set magazine that some schools choose to study for component two. On the front cover of the magazine, the model is gazing directly at the audience. That direct gaze is going to draw that audience right in. And there's also some direct address on the front cover as well. So talking directly to the readers and that can be quite persuasive as well. The magazine features a variety of celebrities, including Jackie Kennedy and Alfred Hitchcock. Now, any mention of a celebrity in a magazine is often likely to draw in an audience who want to feel glamorous, who want to feel like they're reading about the world of rich and famous people. Jackie Kennedy in particular was seen as a huge role model for women around the world. She was very glamorous and it created a very aspirational lifestyle for women. So any magazine that had photos or an article about her would have been seen as very, very engaging. The front cover claims that Women's Weekly is one of the world's greatest weekly women's magazines. And perhaps this claim might persuade some audiences to buy the magazine. It might make it seem higher quality. There's the use of rhetorical questions on the front cover as well, and that helps to get the audience thinking about what their answer would be. And then it creates enigma. They want to open the magazine and read further to find out what the answers to those questions are. There's a lot of flattery of British women on the magazine and in the magazine as well. So they mention that British women are special several times. They talk about British women being mysterious, being beautiful, being special. And that flattery of British women might make British women more inclined to buy this magazine. It certainly would have appealed to people in that kind of post-war period, 10, 20 years after the Second World War, this idea that British women were special may well have appealed to a lot of people at the time. In the contents page, the writing is broken up into lots of small chunks. And actually, you can see that on several pages throughout the magazine. Breaking writing up into small chunks is a really great way of making it easy to read and easy to understand. A lot of women at the time had reasonably low levels of education. Women, don't forget, were often prevented from going on to higher education before 1960. And so making your magazine as easy to read and understand as possible would have made sure that your magazine could be accurate accessed by as many women as possible. Within the contents page, you can see that they mention a variety of countries, Russia, America, etc. With no internet in the 1960s, people have very little information about other countries and certainly global travel was still a reasonably new thing and people were certainly not flying to these far-flung destinations really. So having information in your magazine about these other countries would have been seen as exciting and would have offered audiences an element of escapism to countries that they'd never been to. There's a kind of signature style um, logo, which is personally yours because it kind of looks like a signature as though it's been handwritten. It adds this personal, intimate feeling to the magazine, which some audiences may like. There is a small article about women who have been widowed after the war or in general and how lonely they feel with some suggestions about how they might start to make more friends. Don't forget a lot of women lost husbands, fathers, brothers, sons in the First and the Second World War. So the idea that in the 1960s there were a lot of women who were widows, even, you know, very, very young women. So having an article here that they may be able to identify with would help draw in audiences and make audiences feel like somebody understood them. On the advice page called How It's Done, there's lots of information and advice for audiences. It might make them feel as though they're learning something. There's lots of things that they can find out that might be useful about the world and society. It certainly reflects some of the concerns that women might have had at the time, concerns about things such as childcare, cooking, cleaning, travel and even work. A lot of these were issues that women were experiencing or starting to experience in the 1960s. So lots of advice here that would be relevant for readers. Magazines, as they still do now, tend to target women's insecurities. So the beauty article about A-level uh, beauty makeup um, suggests that women should be very concerned about their face shapes, their nose shapes, how round or slim or tall or long their faces and noses are and how they could correct these issues in order to seem more attractive. So playing on women's insecurities and offering solutions within the pages of their magazine. 
The magazine offers some elements of interactivity, such as the beauty quiz where you can score yourself depending on what you have or haven't done beauty wise. And there's also a crossword page as well. Many women would like these interactive elements that would give them something to do and stop them from feeling bored. Many women at the time were feeling quite bored. Some of them had been able to experience quite exciting jobs and roles during the Second World War. And since then, they'd gone back into the homes when their husbands, brothers, fathers and sons had returned from the war. And so these women had been forced back into domestic roles and some of them were finding it quite dull. So the advert that is persuading women to join the WRAC might have offered this element of adventure and escape. It suggests that women could travel and that they could be independent. It offers this idea of escapism to women that were feeling quite trapped. Likewise, the fiction articles offer that same escapism. There's discussions of tropical places and jungles, romances. So there's lots of entertainment there for audiences and lots of escapism, dreaming about stories that happen to other people in other places. There are also some things that might add this sensation of value for money for audiences. So any coupons off, any mention of free gifts, any mention of discounts, that kind of thing. Um, and so those things would really appeal to women looking for value for money. And that is most mainstream audiences in the 1960s. In the second fiction story, there is a romance narrative about a woman who finds a man who loves her despite all of her faults. Um, and this would have appealed to quite a lot of women at the time who uh, would have quite enjoyed this idea of a man falling in love with them and, and ignoring the fact that they might be, um, you know, daydreamy or late all the time or whatever it might be. This idea that a man would love you despite these so-called faults would be quite enjoyable. So that was my easy to understand guide to woman magazine and audience. Don't forget to check out the rest of my channel for lots of other videos that might be relevant to you on woman magazine and a lot of the other set texts for Educas, A-Level, GCSE and indeed all the other exam boards. If you do have a comment or a question, you can leave them below, particularly if there's a video that you want that I don't already have.